This is Chamber Voices, conversations with the people that drive local business. Presented by the Fort McMurray Chamber of Commerce. Well, hi there and welcome to Chamber Voices, a podcast presentation of the Fort McMurray Chamber of Commerce. My name is Stuart McIntosh, presenting it to you. It's a real pleasure to have you on board. Today we are talking to someone who's been in town for quite a while, someone who has just a reputation in this community for being a swell person, being a great individual, and certainly being a very strong leader. Oh, and incidentally, also a member of our board of directors of the Fort McMurray Chamber of Commerce. I should not leave that part out. I'm talking today to Stu Weigel. He's the operating partner and the manager at Fuel by Earl's downtown Fort McMurray. From one Stu to another, it's sure great to be talking to you today. It's great talking to you today. How are you doing? If I were any better, I'd be you. I've got, I don't have too much to complain about. Certainly no more than the next person. That's awesome. It's a beautiful day outside. Good it is. patio weather. Yes. Good patio weather. It is good patio weather. And that's an important facet of what we're going to talk about today. Believe me, I will not leave out patio season when I'm talking awesome. to you, Stu. But I want to begin because for those who, who haven't maybe met you yet, for those who maybe have not had an opportunity to physically be in Earl's, I would love for everyone to get to know you. Can you give us a little bit about yourself? Tell us about your background and when you came to town, what you came to do, that sort of thing. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. First, I want to say thank you, Stuart, for even having the podcast and having me on. It's super appreciated. And I just, uh, even before we started here, I just want to say thank you again for everything that you've brought to the Chamber of Commerce. We've thank done so, so well to move it this last year with you and Diana. And I just, you're a huge contribution to that. So thank you so much. Much obliged, man. I appreciate that very much. Yeah. So uh, I guess a little bit about me. I'm a, I'm a humble husband of a beautiful <laughs> wife, Dana, and uh, a father of four uh, rambunctious boys. So I've got four four boys, Lincoln, Maverick, Jake, and Wyatt. Cool. Uh, and so, yeah, they're a huge part of my life. I'm very, very uh, functional in the church and uh, a big part of that scene, too. Uh, super excited in those areas, as well as obviously being in business and being part of the town and the community. Um, I've been here for 17 years. Wow. Uh, love this community. Um, I was one of those originals up up for three and, and gone. That was the three and done. Um, my wife was six weeks and done, so we've done well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. And so, yeah, I was in a dream spot. I had the right reputation at the right time, and it... Uh, it, uh, it worked out for me. I was working with Joey's, actually, a sister company of Earl's, mm -hmm. and um, it held many positions through there, head chef, regional trainer, stuff like that. And um, the ownership group that was up here, uh, Earl's wasn't doing very well in the community. And if you were around in, in Fort McMurray in the, you know, kind of the 01 to 04 era, we were not exactly what I would say community friendly. No. Um, so a lot of problems, a lot of issues. Um, and so what they did is they got, they got two of us, myself and uh, my partner, we came up and they gave us a sweetheart deal. And so they said, will you go up and run it? And we said, no. And then they said, "Will you want to buy in? And we said, no. And then they said, how about sweat equity? And we'll give you a percentage of the business. If you just go up for three years and run it. And we said, yes. That and so great. I was like, yeah, I was young. I was 26. I'm like, Earl's doesn't do franchises. And so. It's kind of one of those offshoots that the Golden Boys got who started with Earl's. And so it was an opportunity that I knew that I would never get anywhere else. And so uh, when I saw the location, I knew it had to be a management issue because Earl's had the prime location in town being right on the highway. And so we came up and it was great. Within four years, we took it from worst uh, Earl's sales-wise in the company to first. And we held on to that for eight years. And so it uh, it's become our baby. But... Um, yeah, that was amazing. And that was an amazing time. But honestly, Stuart, I'd, I'd be uh, amiss to say that I'm not, I'm more proud of Earl's than what we do now in the community. Back then it was about sales and parties and, and we had fun. I was in my twenties and I acted like I was in my twenties. And, uh, but now, now a little bit differently for what, you know, what's gone on in this community in the last five years to really actually dig deep and be a, a community member. You know, it's not about just serving food and, and drinks, but it's about serving the community. And that's, uh, the team that we have there, you know, I'm just, I'm just a guy, but the team that we actually have at Earl's, I'm super proud of them what they do today. It's interesting how far removed we are from 17 years ago. I mean, that's 2004, as you were saying, it truly was the wild west back then. 
Um, it was just a different world up in Fort McMurray. And I remember growing up in Edmonton, by the, in that era, I was in high school. I was still kind of in my late teens at that time. But I remember being frightened of the prospect of this city up north that apparently you just show up and someone will hand you a job for you know they'll get they'll get you to work for 100k a year doing whatever it was so strange this mythical place in my mind and it, I, I agree with you i mean we arrived here in i'm going to say about 2010 and things had obviously cooled down slightly from the early 2000s but it was still a bit of a culture shock being so far removed from it now this community is such a such a great place to be the community it's the community that keeps you here right like we said we were three and done and i remember when dana and i got married in 2010 right when you showed up dana and i were like okay when we get married we're gonna get set up <laughs> we'll head we'll 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 leave and we'll head out and then we're like no okay well after our first kid we'll you know we'll call it you know you can't raise kids in fort mcmurray and then you know our second kid it's like okay well after our second kid we'll do it and then it's like okay well, when the first one gets into school and then we had our third kid and then we got actually, I you know our, our Lincoln started going to school and the school system was amazing. And we're like, okay, like even living in Fort McMurray for that long, we were still blind to the fact and, and you know, that, you know, well, schools aren't great. And then they get into schools and, you know, I have to, I have to hype up Dave McNeely. Uh, our kids went to Dave McNeely before the pandemic. And I have to admit, I, I have not ever seen a better education environment than I do at Dave McNeely. But Roxanne and uh, Diane do there is, is un believable uh and so yeah i i it's now we're at that spot and it was funny it was the same it was the same thing with uh with the hospitals i remember it's like we were really worried about having a baby in our hot in this hospital yes. like you know we're in the middle of nowhere what's going on and we get in there and uh, the nurses there are uh, like amazing and i like they're not good they're amazing and so i remember by jake uh, where, yeah, Jake, we, we were, um, Dana was pregnant in, and she was visiting her parents in Ontario, and she was like, get me back to Fort McMurray, I'm having <laughs> my baby there. And it was just, it's just, it was how good the nurses are in this town. The community at every level in every area is so tight. Uh, you know, we've talked about moving away, but I just, we just never believed that we could get what we get here somewhere else. Like it's, that's the anomaly is that community and, and friends are thicker than blood out here. Let me tell you, Stu, I did that. I did the move away for three, four years thing, and we did come back. I can don't don't do it because <laughs> yeah. you're not no, we're, you're not going to yeah. find that. It's you're you could not be more accurate with that assumption. It's it's really a different world, even in within Alberta, going to another community. Um, what we have up here is so special. The hospital and our education system. I am in a similar boat as you with my my kids being of a similar age to yours and i am blown away by the amount of care and attentiveness uh they get from their instructors at school it just blows my mind when i was in the second or third grade i don't even know if my teachers knew my first name to be honest it's just <laughs> incredible but we could go on and on and on about how great the community is that's an easy yeah, thing yeah. to talk about but I, we really want to know about you what are your passions because doing what you do managing a place like earl's incidentally you can find earl's downtown along highway 63 if you're traveling north even if you've never physically been inside the earl's location you've definitely seen it 9802 morrison street you can give them a call at 780-791-3275 if you need directions for your patio tell me about your passions uh, how did they come to intertwine with what you do for work yeah it's funny obviously it's grown over the years um, this was a job. I was in sports. Um, you know, I, all my time was spent, uh, doing that. And, uh, my mom thought that I needed uh, an outlet. And so I started as a dishwasher when I was 15, uh, as just a, a part-time job. And I loved the idea that I couldn't know everything. The more I wanted to learn, the more there was. And so the food industry just made sense to me. And so, you know, they took me on like a, like every restaurant, they were like family. And so I was downtown at Joey's in Eau Claire Market, downtown Calgary, and it just grew. You know, I was able to, you know, be a head chef at a very young age. You know, I was in, in a regional position at, uh, you know, by the time I was 21. And so, and then I just kind of grew through this, this, this passion in the industry. But I realized 
um, very soon that it was the people. Mm -hmm. It's the people that I loved. I was very uh, excited about people. So the mix of food and people went back and forth. And so I didn't even actually even go to school for, for cooking till probably oh, 2002, 2001, 2002. Um, and I got it just as a, Joy's was going through a program of creating their chefs as Red Seal chefs. And so I just jumped on that bandwagon and got it. And then all of a sudden I was up here. And the Wild West back then, like you said, I remember I showed up the first day at Earl's. There was no heat. Uh, the cooks were cooking in jackets. Um, the smoking bylaws were still kind of being in play. So we we're trying to figure out how to do that. Um, the chef at the time told me not to eat the food. What? Um, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was that crazy. Um, and so through that process, I've always been a people person, but didn't really know how to navigate and put that together. And I, I learned a, a, a value in that is that as you serve people, they will serve the community. And so that was, that's kind of been my mantra kind of in entwined through that is that just continue to serve. You know, and it doesn't matter where you're at. I've, we've used it in our marriage. We've used it with parenting. We use it at work. When you're frustrated and you think that you're out, serve. Like get in there and serve somebody, serve a purpose, serve in a direction, and that that will it will work itself out. Um, through that process, obviously, I, you know, I wasn't a Christian at the time, but going through the church, and when you know, I became a Christian in in 2009. That same principle worked in that same area, and so as I as I learned. You know the principles uh, in the church. That was exactly how Jesus was. Is he was he walked the earth and he served, and so that went hand in hand in kind of what I was feeling. And so from there, I I would say that I've I've added two main passions in my life. Uh, it's leadership and it's marriages, and those are the two things that come together for me and drive me all the time. Uh, we're in a spot is that if you can create and let everybody know that they're a leader that they're actually, they have influence over somebody, somebody's watching them, somebody, you're making a difference in somebody's life. And so how you act all the time, what you do makes a difference, no matter how big or now how small, uh, giving them the power to be able to do that and moving that along has been huge. And so that's what we've built every principle in, in our restaurant. On. It's about leadership, leadership development and serving, you know, who are we serving? Um, so much, so often that people ask me like, what, what do you think is the most important position in the restaurant? Mm -hmm. And for me, there's two. There's the host at the front, and there's the dishwasher, or we call them the recruit at the back. But they're the only two people that actually serve each and every guest that walk in. Wow. Right? The host says hi and goodbye to every single guest as they walk through, and the recruit who's washing your dishes, they're, 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 they're washing every dish that you use to eat, every glass that you use to drink, everything that you've gone through. And so you can't have an experience in a restaurant without those two people serving you. And so for me, they're the most important because they serve the most amount of people in our business. Wow. What a philosophy. I, I could probably spend three hours talking to you about leadership. It's something that I know we have in common. I, I love yeah. learning about leadership because it's such, even if you are not a manager, I mean, obviously this podcast is aimed towards those who are entrepreneurial individuals with businesses and people beneath them. But even if you're not a manager, the, the concept of leadership is so, so, so important. If you visit uh, Earl's in Fort McMurray, if you visit their Facebook page, which is easy to find, facebook.com slash Earl's Fort McMurray, or simply look up Fuel by Earl's, you'll find it. I can see what you're describing in leadership. Just from the social content that you put out there. Before we started recording, I made mention of uh, something that you do and have been doing for at least a few months, uh, where you recognize every individual who is a member of your team and you kind of do a biographical thing about them. And it is so, like it's moving. It is moving for me to see the way in which you honor your team through your social media and marketing channels as like you said as the operating partner at this restaurant at earl's well thank you yeah and it's we talked a little bit about this before but it's obviously and when we talk about sharing leadership we you, you delve in, and dive into a lot of like podcasts and books and um i follow uh, a gentleman named craig rochelle and he's a he's a huge leader for me and he talked about one time about your business or your church or whatever you're running will only go as high as you are if you try to keep control of it and so you have to 
you have to be able to empower the people around you to let them do what they do best. And last year was a great year to be able to let go of the reins and be like, because I don't know about anybody else, but I just realized that I couldn't physically do everything last year. There was, and so we were going to crumble and fall. You know, we were at a spot where, you know, we were almost closed down through the floods. And even though wow. we didn't flood personally, but being shut down and having to pay out all the vacation pay and we were having, you know, financial troubles, it was, we were at the bank, like at our ends. And so finally it was just a matter of like, how do we serve? And so I reached out, or sorry, a girl reached out to me, Renee Heffern, um, saying, hey, you know, I'd love to do your social media. And uh, so we brought her on, and she was a complete visionary. She was able to take kind of what I was thinking and put it to, to peace. Um, you know, a, another visionary that was there was, you know, Jade Botting. Uh, she's the GM of our airport location now, but she was helping us with the social media and, and direction to go. And we were talking and it was about, hey, like, how do we make this like a real, you know, a real thing? How do we, how do we take the people within Earls? And so when people think of Earls, they don't think of Earls. They think of, you know, they think of Rebecca and they think of Nicole and they think of Leo and they think of Gabe and they think of Sarah and they think of Taylor and all of those things, right? And so for me, it was, that's what we wanted to do is we want to put a real person to Earl's and you know this is the person serving you and um, she did it she came up with that spotlight and it was awesome and and then we did the, we know we did the one where it's we, we're now taking companies and it was the same idea it was through that frustration how do we serve the community when there was you know a lot of competition and you know how do we get out before this company and how do we how do we do it differently it's like yeah we get out and go you know how can we be community over competition and don't get me wrong we're trying to run better than the guy across the street. That's the name of the game. Of course. But how do we how do we lift everybody up? How do we lift the tide so all ships come up? You know, and so that was the idea. And so again, she created the the, the spotlight of the week for the the community over competition and highlighting businesses uh, that are in our community that we could lift up. It's a beautiful thing. You can see what Stu is describing. Uh, like I said on their Facebook page, you can search "Fuel by Earls." Uh, or at Earl's Fort McMurray, you'll see it and you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Just scroll down, read some of this biographical stuff. It'll uh, it'll warm your heart. We are going to pick up a little bit more on this conversation as well. We will be talking about service and community and why it matters to business owners as well. In the second half of our conversation with Stu Weigel, operations partner and manager of Fuel by Earl's in Fort McMurray, on this episode of Chamber Voices. This is Chamber Voices, conversations with the people that drive local business. Presented by the Fort McMurray Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the second half of our conversation with Stu Weigel, operations partner and manager of Fuel by Earls in Fort McMurray. You're listening to Chamber Voices, a podcast presentation of the Fort McMurray Chamber of Commerce on the internet at fortmcmurraychamber.ca and on social media, Facebook and Twitter at YMM Chamber. We concluded the first half of our conversation talking a little bit about uh, social media and the really effective social media campaign uh, Earls has had in the last half a year or so. And I just love that statement, that poignant statement, a high tide lifts all ships. You know, with that, uh, with that mindset, I'm sure you wouldn't mind, Stu, if people stole your idea, right? <laughs> I want them to. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny. We were, I was talking with um, Colleen Stewart. Uh, she's another entrepreneur in town. Uh, she's been amazing. She used to work at the golf course and she has a million and one ideas. If anybody needs an idea for your business, she's definitely the one to get a hold of. But during the, during the pandemic, um, uh, she came up, her and her son came up with this cooking show. And from this cooking show, um, her and Finn got, uh, has started this candy floss business. So floss by Finn or floss with Finn. And and so she came to me and, you know, she had, there was like all these ideas and, and it wasn't like she wasn't pitching me on anything. She's just sharing, like that's her heart. And so she gives us a bag for the kids and says, Hey, you know, this is what we're doing. And so we try a bunch of it and I'm like, you know what, let's bring this in for the kids at Earl's. And she goes, well, you know, I like, she goes, I just, I, she goes, this is a great idea. I love it. And she goes, are you okay that I, you know, I let everybody else know. And I said, I hope that every restaurant, <laughs> I'm like, you know what, like, 
it's it's this isn't this is, it doesn't we don't need to be the only one doing something again let's execute inside let's execute on the service let's execute on the food let's execute on that but everybody everything else let's lift them up you got to deal with delivery let's figure it out let's do it together you got to deal you know on how the kids can have a better time let's figure it out for me again it's it's the community wins it, we we've proved it in this town time and time again you try to do it on your own it just doesn't work it, it's, it's the community together that really builds and makes it long lasting. You can think that you're out in front of something early on by yourself in this silo, but you're right to do this long term, particularly if you're, I'm assuming, in the restaurant business um, or a similar industry, you need to be linked up with like minded individuals. Uh, the RMWB has helped out by expediting for many restaurants and, and food service businesses, the ability to open up patios. It's patio season at Earl's, I would imagine, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we got both pat patios functioning and running and and, uh, and moving with it, and, and it's been good. And the RMWB has, has, uh, has cleared a little bit of the red tape for us to be able to do that, and we appreciated it. Um, but it is challenging. You know, this is this year, we, we talk about it time and time again, it is challenging. And so you have to... For me, you have to decide why you're getting up yeah. um, and, and, and going to work. I remember seeing, you know, I'd be I'd be lying if I didn't say I spent a few nights crying in my shower trying to figure out what to do next. But we had to we had to move away from the from the financial idea. And as an entrepreneur, you're kind of led by money. And so um, it's kind of like how can you make how can you monetize something? Is is usually how you think. And and I think the same way. You see an idea, you're like. Well, how do you monetize it? But it goes back to that serving. How do you serve? How do, like how does this serve somebody? And then you kind of move from there to the monetizing. And I think as a business that you're already making money, I, I found in this time you actually had to move backwards. And so for me, what I did is I counted the number of employees we had, and you know I went to my wife and I said, okay, I said this is for the 70 people that work for us. This is why I'm getting up in the morning. Like we're we're gonna save 70 jobs today. And so. Wow. When I'm talking to AHS and we're talking to the building inspectors and we're talking to, you know, the friction points of what's out there right what's out there right now, it's that's that's the fight. The fight isn't how do I keep my business open, how do I keep a profit, how do I keep these types of things, which are all important because if we can't stay above water financially, then nobody has a job. But the idea is how do I like how do I get up for those people? Like how do I how do I get up for the single moms in my business? How do I get up for the college students? You know, how do I get up from those guys that moved across Canada to you know, to try Fort McMurray and the restaurant, their first step. And so when you, again, when you put a name, when you put a person, when you put something to that, it just, it makes it different. You come at it differently. Your lens entirely changes. And so that's what we, that's what we fight for every day. That's what we go for. And so, you know, like even I was on the, on the phone call with the health inspector today. And I have to tell you, I, I even told her, I said, I feel like you're the lost luggage of, of employment right now. I said, <laughs> Like nobody, nobody, nobody's happy coming to lost luggage. I think it's probably the hardest job out there. Everybody that shows up is angry because they lost their luggage. Yep. And the health inspectors, you know, and I might be going offline saying this, but they have such a hard, hard job right now mm -hmm. um, because they're taking their information from the provincial government and they're the go between. They're the people, they're the people that have to feed us the information, but can't necessarily make the decision in the moment. And life is just ambiguous right now. And yes. so um, it's so hard. And I, I want to, and I told her, I said, I, I, I just want to keep a relationship with you. I said, but I have to, I have to keep, uh, I'm sure you can hear my kids in the background. No, that is fine. <laughs> I was wondering if you could hear my kids in the background as I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. They're screaming. Four boys, that's what you get. Uh huh. Um, but uh, yeah, and so I was just saying, I said, I just want a relationship after this. I said, you have to realize that. Um, as a business owner, and I go, I'm fighting for these people in my in my job, and so uh, I want to be as compliant as possible. I want to be as safe as possible. You know, we're not looking to bend the rules. We're not looking to do it, but we were just looking for. We want actual, like we. I need an actual rule, and so her and I talk back and forth, and you know, God bless her. She's doing the best that she can, but mm -hmm. it's 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 hard on everybody, and and so we we have to remember that everybody's a person, and everybody's going through a struggle. And, you know, a lot of those people that show up, you know, they're they're doing their job because they, they got asked to do it by somebody else. Yeah. And so it's, you know, they're trying to, you know, I was talking to her. She's a single mom trying to put food on the plate. And, you know, like I wept. I'm just like, I can't believe the stress that she must go through in the day because 
you know, I have to admit, you know, when I get the call that they're there right now, checking out the patio and, and moving things around, uh, it's a it's a tension conversation about, you know, we're, we're balancing jobs and money and, and safety, and that's tough to do in the entrepreneurial world. This has been a conversation dense with insights, Stu. You are a, you're a brilliant guy. I don't mean to, I don't mean to sell you a line or anything, but it's just, uh, I'm just hanging off what you have to say. And I, and I, I know you to be an individual who lives by everything that you've sort of brought to light during our time together. You're just that kind of a person, you're a dynamic individual. But for those who are listening, who just, they need to do something. I'm sure there's a lot of business owners right now that realize they need to do something during this time. Where is the first step? What, where could a business owner start today to sort of begin emulating everything that you've described, the compassion and the lifting of other businesses, the whole high tides analogy? I think you just gotta, you gotta reach out. You know, I, I, I just, you, you start by serving another business. You, you start by serving another individual. Um, the, again, it goes back to the community. As soon as you serve somebody, they will, it, it will come back to you tenfold and you don't do it to get the comeback, but you, it's just, it's, it's a law. Like it just, it just happens. And so when you, when you reach out and go, how can I help you? you you've just, you've started a friendship. You've, you've started it together. You know, Earl's would have never made it through last year. Like I said, we were in the bank wondering if we were even going to make it through March. Um, and we just started serving people. We just started serving the community. We just got all ground, all hands on deck. And, you know, places like HVAC Solutions, you know, Bowman's, uh, Northwest Construction with Mark Taplin, um, you know, uh, just there's so many people out there that have just helped us all the way through the hard times. And it's when, when, you, when I ask them, I'm like, why do you, like, why do you keep on showing up for me? And they're like, look like you just serve like and they just say that there's like you're here to help the community like how can we not help you but it, it starts by reaching out first you you've got to you know in every relationship somebody has to reach out first and so mm -hmm. in business it's the same thing if you want to start a business how do you serve it all it all goes from there it's beautiful these are true words uh, Stu Weigel, the operating partner of Earl's downtown, Fuel by Earl's. You can head to Facebook and search Earl's Fort McMurray or Fuel by Earl's and you'll find them. Give them a call to book a table on their patio, 780-791-3275. Well, Stu, is there anything that you want to add before we kind of wrap up this episode of Chamber Voices today? Uh, no, I just want to say, obviously, thank you so much, Stuart, for having me on. Uh, this is awesome. It's always great to be able to reach out and I'm uh, I, I so appreciate it and yeah but the last words are just we just need to be a community you know this is this is tough on everybody and we the way we go forward is together not apart and so we have to be able to be able to come in and, and communicate and just see each other's side and sit in each other's shoes and and, uh, and and sit there so I hope that everybody can do it out there safely and we'll get through this Fort McMurray is resilient and that's what we're known for and we will continue to be that way.